Hello and welcome to an update of my Lamborghini Gallardo Twin Turbo project, my baby here. It's summer here in Sweden and I am driving the car almost every day now, doing a little bit of tweaks in the garage maybe on the afternoon and have it for a ride in the evening. Everything is working pretty good. I have done some modifications to it. The car is getting better and better all the time. I'm very happy about it and happy to drive the car. So in this video I'm going to show you a little bit of the things I have done lately. One thing that bums me is the sound of it. It doesn't sound as good as I was hoping and if I compare to other Gallardos Twin Turbo I can see on the internet and the one I have here in the garage it sounds a lot better. And the problem I think is here the exhaust. You can see from the left hand turbo and right hand turbo they are not connected anywhere really. If I close the valves, they are connected um, maybe here in the mufflers, but the sound is not that good. So what I will do, I will do an uh, X-pipe. So these will connect together. Then the pulses will be more even, 10 pulses out from the exhaust, and it will have the exotic sound back again, I hope. But first I will uh, start it up so you can hear how it sounds uh, before this modification. Just tested the exhaust here and made a leak check on the new X-pipe here. So next thing, I will wrap this up in some exhaust header wrap. So I'm um, not taking too much heat into the carbon fiber and all the other parts here. So I keep the heat inside as much as possible. So all good, a little bit new sound for the car. alignment here on the car and here we have the some adjustment shims on the sides here you can adjust the lower arm here and in front you adjust the um, toe as usual and some shims here just had a ride here to um, adjust the boost control actually and now it's cool, but uh, I'm gonna show you here. Uh, the boost I want to have is this white line, boost aim, and it should be 80, like uh, 0.8 bar here. And you can see the green line here, the actual boost 61, so it's losing a lot. And you can see uh, maybe here, the boost solenoid duty cycle is 100%. So it's trying to fully close the wastegates but it's not managing to hold the pressure there. So here I can see that the ECU wants to close the wastegates so all the exhaust gases should go to the turbos. It's not doing that. And here we can actually see the wastegate position. It's a little bit messy signal and I think I'm gonna 
and we need to calibrate one is not zero but you can see what's going on here and here when I am um, yeah, want boost they should be closed and uh, yeah, as I say a little bit messy signal but you can see there it's open four millimeters one two millimeters so they are open even though the um, I don't want it so I will change to harder springs in the wastegates and the wastegate is located there and there on the side a little hard to get to so I had to remove the wheels and we can maybe see the wastegate there yeah, the top part of the wastegate is removed there. You can see the top here, and this one has this uh, sensor, the position sensor. The sensor actually is an EGR sensor, maybe from a Ford American car. I don't remember correctly which car it is from. Much cheaper than buying it from TurboSmart, even though it's a nice product, and that one I think is black, so yeah, gray. A little bit uglier but uh, cheaper and it absolutely do the job. It um, can handle the temperature. Uh, instead of the uh, connector that's there originally, I potted this one on there and put a wi um, wire here to a Deutsch connector. Wastegate position number two. So the spring I had in was not that strong. It was good for very low pressure and uh, Luckily I had a box of uh, wastegate springs here, so I could find a pair here, uh, a little bit harder. I'm not sure, this is double springs that uh, actually fits into this TurboSmart wastegate. Uh, maybe I just use the outer one of these now. And hopefully I can get a little bit more boost. Alright, I'm out uh, tuning here with the new wastegate springs here. So I have uh, set um, boost to 80 as you can see here and then we can see how good it tracks here and how good the wastegate works and this is good this is nearby my garage I have a test uh, like a strip over here it's very good straight so I have done many many passes on that one of course only from uh, standstill up to the speed limit so let's have a pass and see how how it's working this and see T usually there's uh, one of those nice uh, roundabouts you can maybe see my 240 driving so here you can see the boost you can see the boost aim is the straight line there it's 80 and then you can see the booster it's around 80 pretty spot on so very good one it's a very nice uh, boost control in this Motec and here you can see also the wastegate positions um, in the beginning here when they are completely closed we have yeah 0205 and when uh, the boost control kicks in when the boost pressure rises here you can see the rises and uh, yeah then they are open up and then they're working also have some PID parameters they're working on it but not that much at the moment it's good still good and the same thing when I tune the V table the fuel you can say but actually it is the air in the engine I tune for correct the lambda and uh, yeah here you can see same run it's not spot on really there need some adjustments uh, I will do it now but later on in uh, higher RPM 5.6 5600 the aim is 081 there don't know if that is the correct for this engine but I just took a number that I maybe think 
and I will take it to Dyno see what this engine wants most but yeah it's around there 0 0.8 a little bit fat but uh, that's okay so yeah that's how I do runs and how I street tune my cars that I have been for yeah many years do a run do logging so yeah here we have the time graph uh, all the time that moving and it's just to pause it when you want by the way what do you think about the lambda on this uh, 1200 cc injectors aim is one and yeah they're pretty spot on uh, yeah and you can always always pause it so very good the fire suppression system the nozzles here is installed and also this bracket is of titanium of course yeah, and some other bolts this is titanium some on the intake here titanium so putting in some nicer fasteners some aluminum lightweight ones as well by the way the new blow-off valves sounds better and better more boost <laughs> we put into this car so yeah had about one bar 14 piece out as most but I think that um, it's not as efficient as it could be. Uh, I think it should be more power at that boost, what I feel, but I have no numbers at all. So I need to go to a dyno so I can tune the intake camshafts and exhaust camshafts. It's four variable camshafts. It's variable intake. This one is on this solenoid. I control also by the Motec, everything. So I need to tweak in that and also see the ignition, what happens with the ignition. So I think the ignition right now is, I'm a little bit safe. It's, um, I don't have, a, numbers of this kind of engines like I have on a 2J how much it wants so that's that engine is easier to street tune than this is now because yeah I'm a beginner at this out here doing some driving I have been at the Manto Park uh, checking drag racing third time actually I'm there so it has been a couple of trips with the car the car is working good yeah you can see a lot of stuff here as well because I was sleeping in a bus there so doing some street tuning on the road here it's nice and uh, yeah not full power yet but uh, nice to have the car driving not many sports cars here in Nurburgru, but here we have a McLaren 720 PS. Very nice condition of this one. We will see if we can do in a race. I do not know how much power this one is making but as you could see this car was racing an Dodge Hellcat that I think have a 710 horsepower stock if that one was stock or not I don't know but I think so and also maybe you can hear in the video that the clutch is slipping so the weakest point of this car is the clutch and uh, yeah now it's slipping so I must fix that one and that is um, a problem actually I did another video about the clutch a little bit of modification of that one and this is the stock uh, clutch material the facing that I replaced to this uh, Kevlar type so it's four of these ones that I replaced and I was a little bit unsure if um, this will would hold up or not but no it will not hold up so what I think and put in another material that is better I think that the round clutch facing like this segmented ceramics instead 
and the dimensions I need for this one. I was actually looking for that uh, when I built this clutch from the beginning. So I don't know where I can find this, but I know that it is possible to find or someone can make it. Uh, the disc should be 214 millimeters outside diameter, inside 148 and between the holes there 182. So if someone knows where to find this, it should look like this. Please let me know. And uh, yeah, only if you know where this dimensions and that kind of material. Um, don't just uh, show me links of uh, someone who makes clutches because I have been looking for this many hours, looking for this before and uh, contacted many of the companies. But most companies that sell complete clutches do not want to sell just uh, the clutch facings. So I will hunt for new parts for the clutch and uh, please let me know if you know anything about it or if I should buy another, uh, yeah, some other type of clutch. Um, it is a uh, two plate clutch in this car. So unfortunately this clutch is smoked now. Thanks for watching and please uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more about this project and my other projects and other cars. Maybe you can help me to 100,000 subscribers and then I think I will get the silver play button from YouTube. That would be really cool. Thank you.